Good morning, everyone. Man, I kind of sounded chipper when I said that. Oh, I am Pastor Holly, and I will explain that comment in just a second for those who don't know what I've been up to for the last week. Um, we've taken our team to Blind River for VBS and just got back Friday night. We had a great time away. I am going to confess, I am quite weary this morning. And um, so it is good to be here. It's good to be home. And um, it's good to have you all here this morning. Pastor Daniel is on holidays this week. And so i um, hoping that he is getting some time of rest and renewal. And so I have just a few announcements this morning. Wait, I should just go back to that Blind River piece for a second. So I don't mean to just gloss over that. We did have a good week away. We had a great week away. Um, but stay tuned because we will be sharing on April the 2nd in two Sundays time. You'll hear from the team about our adventures in Blind River. So um, more to come on that. And I don't want to steal anybody's thunder. So I'm not going to say too much more about it this morning other than it was a really good time. So by way of announcements this morning, we do have a coffee hour after church this morning downstairs in the lower auditorium. And so hopefully you can stay and join us for that. And following um, this week, we have a men's fellowship supper this Thursday, Roger, the 23rd at 6 o'clock p.m. at Kelsey's. And so is there a sign up, Roger, for that? Just come or talk to Roger and bring a friend. All right, and then the connecting team has asked that I remind you all about our Look Who's Coming to Dinner, which is on March the 31st, and there is a sign up in the foyer for that. And today is the last Sunday to sign up for that so that we can arrange hosts and who will be the surprise guests at the host's homes. So if you need more information, you can see that at the Welcome Center after service. And it's always a good time of getting to connect in a little bit of a smaller group. Good food, good fellowship. And so um, please check that out and sign up for that as well. And in addition, Todd wanted me to just remind everyone about our New Brunswick team going to Arrowhead on May the 3rd to the 7th. And so if you would like more details about that or to sign up for that team as well, speak to Todd. And I got a text message this morning from Bev and she and Mike were to be at church this morning, but they are not because they are on their way to visit baby Maxwell. Maxwell Peart was born on Thursday, March the 16th. Um, he would be, Daniel and Joy Peart's first child, third grandchild for Mike and Bev, and so Bev wanted me to share that news with you this morning, and so we give our congratulations to Bev and Mike on a new, a new little grandbaby. And so this morning, before worship team comes to lead us, let me just share this as our call to worship this morning. Psalm 113, <clears throat> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you servants. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is exalted over all the nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, the one who sits enthroned on high, who stoops down to look on the heavens and on the earth? And so as worship team comes, let me pray for us this morning, and let's prepare to praise and worship our Lord on high, who is so worthy and deserving of our praise. Father God, I thank you so much for today, and thank you that we can enter into your house and to praise you. And may praise and thanksgiving be something that is on our lips each and every day, not just as we come into this place. You are holy, awesome, and mighty God, and we thank you for that. God, I thank you for um, bringing the Blind River team safely home and for we pray for 
the New Brunswick team getting ready to go in what will just be a few short weeks as well. And God, we thank you for ways that you're at work in our community, in our church family. <clears throat> God, we pray that you would be with Pastor Daniel today. Give him rest and thank you for his leadership. God, we pray for Roger as he comes to speak in just a few minutes and that you would um, bless him as he gives to us the word that you have laid on his heart. And we thank you for those who lead us in worship this morning. And we just pray that you would be in our service. May we sense you in a real and a tangible way, Lord. We give you thanks and praise in your name. Amen. And I'm going to invite you to stand and let's sing together this morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are going to sing Blessed Assurance. We sing there is power in the blood.
great singing. Thank you. You can be seated. <clears throat> okay, if I could have all the children come up to the front for just a few minutes before you go downstairs. Get my green light on here. I don't know what I'm doing. Good morning, everyone. I brought along my box with me this morning, and in it are some things that I want to share with you. I want to begin by sharing with you, are you ready for this? It's a picture. I want you to look at this picture closely. Okay? Show it up here so everybody can see what this picture is. Anybody know what this picture is? It's a picture of some people working in a laboratory doing an experiment. Okay? And as they do uh, this experiment, they have some things that they're uh, using to do that experiment. You see these here, those are the ingredients that they're going to use for the experiment that they're doing. And they have a stand here, and on top of the stand, okay, they has a test tube where they're going to mix all the ingredients for the, okay, for the experiment that they're going to, okay, to do. And you'll notice at the back, as one person is doing the experiment, someone else is making notes. What happens when they mix all of these ingredients together? What, the, what is the result that, uh, of all of this? I thought this morning that we might do an experiment right here. What do you think? Would you like to do an experiment right here this morning? Okay. Well, I brought along with me some things that were to help us to do this experiment. Okay? On something here. This is like our test tube. It's not quite the kind of test tube you would use in the lab, but it's pretty close. Okay, so this is uh, this is going to be our test tube. Okay, and as this is our test tube, well, there's going to be some ingredients that we're going to put in. Okay, to uh, this test tube, and. These ingredients, I hope and pray, <laughs> will help us to produce revival in our churches. You know what the revival means? The word, that big word revival means? It means people coming back to God. It means sometimes people who once knew God knew Jesus, and for one reason or another, left him, are brought back to Jesus. And once more, they begin to follow him and, uh, um, and love him and to uh, serve him. Now, there are some ingredients that we need in order for that to happen. One of those ingredients that I have in my box is this one. Can, can anybody read that small printing? What does it say on that? Anybody read that? I know it's my writing, so you probably can't. <laughs> well, it says, search heart. One of the most important ingredients to where that we can um, uh, have to produce ri re uh, revival in our churches is a, a searching heart. A heart that wants us to, uh, to come uh, to God. That loves the God. And wants us to, to follow God. If you and I 
are going to help God to um, produce rival, uh, revival in our churches, we need a heart for him. So I'm going to put that ingredient into the test tube here this morning. As I put that ingredient, I'm going to put another ingredient in here. And you know what this one is, of course, don't you? What does this one say? Pray. pray. How many of you know how to pray? Hand up in the air if you, can, you know how to pray. All right. Uh, some people back there don't know that one yet. <laughs> okay. So, so what is prayer? You know what? I, I remember somebody telling me a long time ago something really simple. Prayer is talking to God. And God wants us, as we're working, to talk to him. Now, when we talk to God, okay, um, as far as revival is concerned, well, sure, he wants to hear from us. Because um, he wants to talk to us about revival. But he also uh, wants us, as we were, to pray, okay, for people that might need revival in their life. And they could be our friends, our neighbors, family members, boys and girls as were that we know that, well, don't know Jesus very much uh, well anymore. And we need as the word to pray and hold those people up as the word to God. Now when we pray, when we search our hearts, okay, for God, make sure that we're right with God, there's one more thing that we need to do if we're going to have revival happen and take place. And that's this. Anybody? Read? What does this one say? Can't read that one. It says invite others. Now, how can you have revival if you don't invite people into the church so that they can meet Jesus there in what is said and what is done? So, if we're going to have revival, we have to invite people to come with us to the church. And sometimes we may even pick them up in our car and bring them with us so that they don't have to come alone. One of the best things that we can do, you know, if we want to have people to come to our church and get a, a revival, a, to have be revived, is to pray for them before we even invite them. And so if we're going to have a revival, yes, we have to search our hearts <laughs> And yes, we need to pray. And yes, we need to invite them. But there's one more thing that we need to do if revival is going to break out in our church. And you know what that is? Well, I couldn't bring it with me this morning, but here it is. It's a fire. If you're working in a lab doing an experiment like this picture, you'll notice in that picture there was a fire that they were using to do the experiment with. Well, God wants to light a fire in us too. And do you know how he does that? It's through the Holy Spirit that wants to come and to set our hearts on fire for Jesus. To share his word and um, God's love with others. To help others to come to know him and love him and follow him. So it's a little bit, if we were doing this experiment, it'd be a little bit like this flame here and we hold the, word, the test tube over it and let the Holy Spirit heat up all of these ingredients and mix them all together. And when... They're all mixed together just right. Guess what happens? We have something that's produced. And what's that? 
Anybody read that? Revival. That's when revival will take place, okay? This is something is word that is needed today in our will very much. Because there's a lot of people out there, and you know some of them, okay, who don't know Jesus at all. And many more who did know Jesus, but have got away from that and from him and need to be brought back, as it were, okay, uh, to uh, God. We need to bring them to our church and help them as a, uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit to come to know God and love him and to follow him. And that involves all of us, brothers and sisters in the Lord. I pray that in and through this church, revival might break um, out in Peterborough and the surrounding areas. Let's have a little prayer before you go to Sunday school. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us. Help us, Lord, to get to know you and love you and follow you so that not only, Lord, can we praise you, but we can turn around and help others to come to know you and love you and follow you. May revival break out as it were from here in this church as it were, amongst all of us. And then as it were, from, uh, go forth from here into uh, the surrounding community. We ask all of this now in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> All right, going to let you go for Sunday school. Please stand with us as we sing a couple more songs. Uh, the first one is uh, Grace Greater Than Our Sin. <clears throat>
my Jesus, I love thee. Just before we get into this morning's uh, uh, message, um, I do want to go back for just a moment to um, the announcement that uh, Holly mentioned in terms of the Men's Fellowship Supper this coming Thursday at 6 o'clock at Kelsey's um, Restaurant uh, here in Peterborough. Um, I hope as, as many of the men in the congregation as possible will come and enjoy this time together. We do have a room reserved to, for our own particular roos, a room for our roos, so that um, we have a, a quiet place where we can um, listen to one another and talk with, with one another. Um, uh, we have a little bit of a uh, devotional in terms of uh, with our meetings, so there's a little bit of spiritual food along with... Um, the good food of the restaurant and our fellowship time together. So please uh, come and join us. There's no, um, uh, you don't have to reserve ahead of time. I don't really want to know whether you're coming or not. I just want to see you there at six o'clock. <laughs> okay, so that we can start on time and hopefully uh, we can finish up um, around seven o'clock or shortly uh, there uh, after. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, 
I thank you this morning for the privilege that you've given to me to minister in your name. I thank you for your wonderful word, the Bible, which you have given to us that it might be a light unto our path. I ask for the Holy Spirit and to fall upon me and upon this meeting place to minister to each one of us and to all of us together. And I ask all of this now in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. A few weeks ago, Pastor Daniel uh, mentioned the Ashbury uh, uh, revival, which began back on Wednesday, February the um, 8th in Ashbury, Kentucky. It involved some students going to the chapel at the university on that Wednesday evening. And I have been told that as they gathered there and as they worshiped God, they began to pray for repentance. And as the service continued, something happened. Because when the service was supposed to be over, all of the students there didn't want to leave. They stayed to continue to worship God, to pray to God, to pray for one another, and to minister to one another. And that wasn't the end of it, because as those students stayed there, other students on campus heard about what was going on, and they came into the chapel to join with everyone else. And then other people from outside in the community heard about it, and they came to the chapel and wanted to be part of it. And then people from across the country heard about it, and they too wanted to come and uh, join in. And then people from other parts of the world heard about it, and they too wanted to come and to be a part of it. And I was told that uh, things got so um, uh, wrapped up that it was very difficult to get into Asbury community itself because of all of the people that were there. Now, as this was taking place in Asbury, in another part of the United States, in California, there was a, a movie that was released called The Jesus Revolution. This movie was all about the, the 1970s, the hippie movement, which, okay, I don't know if you believe this, I was part of in my own small sort of a way. But I also know there were some others that were here that were part of that movie, that movie time. I know Charles Jordan is where he lived in California and he talked a little bit about being a, um, a hippie in those uh, days. But that whole time period was a time when uh, there was protest against the war in um, Vietnam. There was a, an anti-establishment at the time. It was when uh, people wanted to make love, not war. When peace was the operative um, word. Yes. And in the midst of all of this, there was a, an outbreak as were of um, the Holy Spirit because young people in particular were hungering and thirsting after God. They didn't know it. They were hungering and thirsting after truth, after meaning and purpose as were in their life, in the midst of all of the darkness and the chaos as were that um, um, was part and parcel of that time. Now, what's interesting about all of this is this. At the same time as when the Jesus revelation was taking place in California back in 1970, there was another revival that was taking place in Ashbury, Kentucky, at the same time. Do you think that was coincidence? Or do you think that the fact that the same thing seems to be happening today um, is God saying something to us 
God doing something that we need to sort of pay attention to. I don't have to tell you this morning that we live um, in dark times. We live in a world that seems to be moving farther and farther away from God and the things of God by the day. As Pastor David uh, Jeremiah uh, just said recently, we're living in a dangerous world filled with medical emergencies, family crises, global instability, and threatening situations. In the midst of all of this, the question that I think is on all of our hearts is, well, what can be done about it? And to zero that in a little closer, what should the Christian response be to what is taking place in our world today. What does God expect us as we're to do? Well, there's various answers to that question for us. For many people in the church today, the answer simply is to do nothing, to carry on as is. And then there are some others who are advocating that the church should retreat into what I call some kind of holy huddle, where we gather together as God's people on Sunday morning and we just carry on as we're living our life as we're from, from, from there. But brothers and sisters in the Lord, I warn you about that. Because the Christian church back in 1970 was doing that very thing. And the church found many of its pews empty because the church wasn't meeting the, the needs as were of many people who were searching for, for answers to the problems of their own day and time. But as we talk about answers, there are some churches today, no less back then, who did that one thing that we all need to do, and that's to pray. And that brings me to the scripture reading that, that I've chosen for this morning's message. It comes to us from Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. It is words which God is speaking to Solomon a long, long time ago. And God tells Solomon this, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Now, oftentimes when I hear this verse as we're being spoken, it is being spoken by people in the church, and they're pointing their finger at the world and saying, world, this is what you need to do. When in reality, this verse was not addressing the world, but it was addressing, as it were, the church or more particularly, God's people. Notice how this verse begins? If my people. When God spoke these words were to Solomon, he was speaking to Solomon and the rest were of the Jewish people. He was speaking to them at a time when Solomon and uh, uh, the people of Israel had just finished uh, building the new temple in Jerusalem and dedicating it to the glory of God. And yet, God knew that as much as they worshipped him today, that they could be like you and me and fall away from, from him tomorrow. And so he said to Solomon, what he would say to us what we need to do if that happens in our own lives. Now, as God speak, spoke as we were back then, as we were to his people, Solomon and as we were the people of Israel, 
Who are God's people today? Yes, God has a covenant with the Jewish people, and he has not, as a word, avoided that covenant. It is still in vogue today. The Jewish people still are his chosen people. But God has also entered into a new covenant with a new people. A covenant in which um, he has sent his uh, son, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, to establish a new relationship with each and every one of us. That through a personal relationship with God, through the Lord and Jesus Christ, we might be saved and we might be put right, okay, with uh, God. My point in mentioning this to you this morning is simply this, that when we talk about God's people in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, we're not just talking about the Jewish people anymore. We're talking about the church in the world today and what we need to do if we are to bring healing to our land if we are to change the way the world is going today. Yes, the church is God's people in the world. And so when God is speaking about my people today, he is speaking, as it were, about you and I in the church of Jesus Christ. And he's telling us what we need to do if we are to bring revival into our own world, to our own nation. Do you know that the word that is translated land in 2 Chronicles 7, 14 can also be translated in terms of earth, nations, country, and world. And so God is uh, uh, telling us that we are the instrument through which he wants to work in bringing uh, revival into our world. God mentions four things to Solomon that we need to pay attention to today. He tells Solomon and people of Israel that first they need to humble themselves Then they need to pray. And then they need to seek God's face. And finally, they need to turn from their wicked ways. If they do all four of those things, then God makes a promise. He says, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins. And I will heal their land. Let's look at this a little bit closer. First thing that I want you to notice this morning is this. When God, as the word says, uh, uh, that um, we need to take action, it's not, he's not talking to the world. He's talking to the church, and you and I in the church. If revival is to take place, It needs to begin with you and me in the church. And how does that happen? Well, he begins to lay that answer to that question out for us when he says we must humble ourselves. You know what it means to humble yourselves in the sight of God? It means to bend the knee, come into submission, give up running your own life, Being willing to take orders from the Almighty. Put yourself under the authority of God. Reality is that too often we profess faith in in God through the Lord Jesus Christ, but we only pay lip service as the word to doing things the way God wants us to. We still too often sit on that fence and we want to do our own thing and yet come to church on Sunday and listen to what the good book has to say to us. 
we do need to humble ourselves. But as the first step is is humbling ourselves, the second step is to pray. The word prayer here in the Hebrew means to intercede, make supplication. For who? For our world? Yes. For Canada? Yes. For Peterborough? Yes. But notice who this verse is directed to. It's directed to you and I and the church. And so we need to pray for ourselves. We need to pray that revival would take place in our lives. And then from our lives spread out. It's from there um, into the world around us. It's not by accident that revival broke out in the Ashbury Fab University a few months ago when people, students, were gathered in a chapel praying prayers of repentance. It was not by accident that the Jesus movement took um, up in flight when young people back in the early 70s were cried out to God for truth because they were lost and and the drugs and everything else that was part and parcel to the the day. They needed the truth of God. They needed the word of God. They needed, as it were, the experience of the Holy Spirit. Yes, we need to pray for ourselves and for our world. As we need to humble ourselves, pray, God says we also might need to seek God's face. To seek means to reach out. The reference to my face means to seek the favor of God. I was listening downstairs this morning to Priscilla Shire as um, uh, she spoke to us in our study of, um, on Elijah. And she spoke about the, the favor of God resting on us as the Holy Spirit is once more allowed the word to come in and flourish and grow and shape and mold as were our uh, life. That's the kind of hunger and thirst that we need as Christians if revival is to take place in our own day and time and emanate from each one of us. But as we need to seek the favor of God, last but not least, we are told this morning that we must turn away from our wicked ways. What I found interesting here is when I looked at that word to turn back or to retreat, the word itself implies not necessarily to the same starting point as we started out from. So when we talk as we're about turning away from our evil ways, it means, yes, turning away from sin, and turning back is the word of God, but not necessarily to um, fall into the same old lifestyle that we once knew. Because there's something new that God uh, wants to do in and through our um, lives oftentimes. Yes, we need to repent. We need to, to, to turn as we're back as we're uh, to God. And then the wonderful thing for us is this, that as we do our part, God will do his part. What is God's part? It's a promise that he makes to you and to me. He says, if you're willing to humble yourself, you're willing to pray, if you're willing to seek my favor, and if you're willing, as it were, to turn from your wicked ways, then I will hear your prayers, and I will forgive your sin, and I will heal your land. Is that not what all of us want? 
not only for ourselves, but for the world around us? Is that not what revival is all about? Yes. I pray as where that's something that you and I as where would hunger and thirst for. Do you know that behind any great revival that has ever taken place in human history, that there's always been prayer. The prayers of God's people and for God to do a, a wonderful work of turning the world around. I remember one time reading a little bit of the history of the Welsh revival, which took place back in 1904 and 5. And the chronologies of the history of that particular revival pointed to two grandmothers who so hungered and thirsted after revival for their own, as a word, nation at that time, that they gathered at the dining room table um, in uh, their, uh, one another's home, and they prayed for God, as the word, to do work amongst, as the word, the people. And as they prayed, and others joined them in prayer, a revival broke out and change um, up and for the better up and took up in place. Yes. Revivals were can't up, up and take place. Only it begins as we're with you and me. And it comes through up and you and me. Now don't get me wrong here. You and I can't revive anybody. It's only God as the word, uh, 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 that uh, truly uh, uh, can institute a revival. But God wants to work through you and me and his church in order for that to happen. The world of the 1970s is much like our world today. There is a sense of hopelessness and despair and desperation that existed then and exists in our world today. God answered the call for the revival, for revival back then. Why wouldn't he answer that call today if his people would come to him? So I ask you again, do you think it's a coincidence? Or do you think God is trying to say something to us today as we look at what has happened again in Asbury, Kentucky, and as the Jesus movement is the word, uh, motion picture, okay, uh, has come out and people once more are being asked as the word, uh, to look at what God did then and what God's work can do today. It's what the world needs. Revival. God at work calling a new generation of people to himself. There are some who claim that the revival is taking place is particularly focused by God on that generation Z who have no knowledge or understanding of God and yet need God desperately just like the rest of us. A wise old man once a long time ago said this to me, Roger, if you want to go to work for God, Find out where he's working and then join him there. I think that's why his advice is worked up and for all of us as we're to pay attention. Where do you think God is working, Catherine, today? Are you ready to join him there? Now, I'm not advocating this morning for you to get in your car after this service and drive down to Ashbury University 
or to find some church that's involved with the Jesus movement locally. No, what I am um, um, advocating this morning is what God told Solomon in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will come. I will hear their prayers. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, do you know this morning that you and I are the only hope that this world has to turn from the downward spiral in which it is going? Because only God can revive our world. But he's asking us to be the instrument through which that would come into being. Yes, the world needs revival. God is the only one that can do it. But he needs people like you and I to facilitate that, happen, facilitate that happening. A few weeks ago, Ms. Susan Jackson was telling me about an initiative that she's involved in. Apparently, there are a group of Christians who have organized online and are praying for revival for Canada 24-7. 365 days of the year. That means there is someone praying for revival every hour of every day of every month of the year. They have a burden, okay, for this country and to see if um, uh, God changed the direction that our nation is going. You should talk to Susan about that if you're interested. I'm sure she can give you more details about it all. But if you don't want to get involved in that, then I would simply invite you to the Tuesday morning prayer meetings here at the Free Methodist Church of Peterborough. Because we get together there. We're a small group. But as we pray together, we are praying for uh, revival, not only nationally or provincially, but locally, right here in Peter, Peterborough and the surrounding area. So there are ways in which you can plug yourself in and to help us for revival to take place in our own time in our own place, right here. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the depth of your love and your compassion and your concern for each one of us. For when we were lost, you didn't give up on us, but you searched us out. You sent your Son to be our Savior and our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for people today who are lost or who have backslidden and need to find their own way back to you. We pray, Lord, for revival and to take place in Canada, in Ontario, in Peterborough, most of all, beginning right in our own heart. Help us, um, uh, Lord, to, to humble ourselves and to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways, to pray that revival can and will take place as we're in your own wonderful way amongst us. 
These things we ask now in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. With us, uh, we're going to sing the wonderful cross. I hope everyone will come downstairs after the service to enjoy a fellowship time as the word together and to go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift upon you the light of his countenance and give to you peace. Amen.